Okay, so in the previous video I was trying to work, try to illustrate how the valuation of the American option, because again in the question that I set out here we have to get, well it was European, we worked at that, now we need to get the American. The American option basically falls in line with the same calculations as the European option. The key difference, as I pointed out in the previous, pay, in the previous video clip, was that at the second in this two-step tree in the intermediate intermediate step we've got to determine which is greater the time value of the option determined by by these so purely determined by the the backward recursion formula or is the intrinsic value of the option greater and if we we're at 6971.01 as for the futures price and the exercise price on the option is given as 60, as we saw before. Then 69.71 minus, subtract away the 60, would give us a value of 971, which exceeds the, exceeds the time value given by our, value, our figure we obtained before. So if we use the time value of the option of 95.178, which is what we have here, then uh, that's used for doing the backward recursion with the European option. What the American option gives us is extra privileges to exercise early. If we can exercise early, then it's preferable to exercise when the option price, when the futures price is 69.71, because if 60 is subtracted from 69.71, that would yield a value of 971, which is better than the time value obtained using backward recursion. So we go with the intrinsic value. If we plug that, so in our final backward recursion going from B, C back to node A, instead of plugging in 951, 951, which we would do for the European option with the American option, Instead, we plug in not 951, but 971, because we have early exercise privileges. When we stick this number here, instead of this, everything else the same. We don't get 431, as we do for the European. We get 440 for the value of the American option. That's the same as what I have here in the backward recursion. It's also the same as I would get for the Cox Ross Rubenstein tree VBA code. And notice I only made one change here. If I change this to E European style, we get the European value. If I change to A, I get the American style. Okay. So note that, um, uh, in this, okay. So we, the American option, obviously in this instance is more valuable than the European option for this uh, binomial futures uh, position, right? Binomial uh, option futures position. Um, the Normally for a European option, it suffice to use the black model. That code is there. I put the, if I come here into the black module, I borrow code from um, curryback.net. You can have a look at that if you follow this web link. You can get on the curryback, curryback.net, and here's a spreadsheet, a downloadable spreadsheet, where there's lots and lots of code. And just purely for convenience, I borrowed um, Curryback's um, uh, black model, black 1976 model, which is typically what we would use for valuing options on futures options on futures where the option type is european we would use a black model just to compare the figures here uh, when we have again uh, the black model is not affected by steps so we can take that out and it is in this instance it is a call option if i want black pot i just change it to pot, but here we're using black call. And uh, the value looks quite a bit higher than this one here. We can do a little test just to see what would happen if we increase the step size 200. Now again, this is the European option. If I go, well, first of all, 10, 
the value goes up. If I put it to 100, again, come back here, 100, this value is getting closer to the black model. That's good because it means this Cox Ross Rubenstein tree for the futures um, contract is converging. What if I put uh, 500, 500? 486 so we can see as we increase the step size here the european specified tree the european cox ross rubenstein tree for the futures binomial futures option binomial construction is converging again might try a thousand there are some limitations here when we run larger scale estimations okay it, get, it tends to slow down that's the, the major issue here so the black model is preferable if I know the option is European. Okay, now very take back to two, then we get the values as here. So it, it looks as if this code, VBA code, is we can benchmark it against the literature showed rate 1995. We can benchmark it against a manual tree, both for the European and the American specifications working. And we can show here the results that I obtained are consistent uh, with. Um, addition marking so we verified the uh, results from Hull. last thing then was there was a question relating to let me just see i think put, uh, the put position futures price is 60 okay so what if we had a, a put what if again maybe that wasn't a question in Hull. um let me see for okay so I, i've what i've done i've taken uh, there is a question relating to put call parity in in hull i don't have it here and um, but what if the option was a put option so if we changed uh, our gaze let's say it's no longer european call but it's a european put and we want to get the american put what are the values again that's got to change um so uh you if i copy make that correction again copy so you here just paste okay so u is equal to e 0 0.3 0 0.5 the maturity this is the time step take the square root so e to the power of sigma multiplied by the square root of the time step it's equal to that hasn't changed that would also be equal to one point 1.1618 that's the same as before so these workings are the same as before again the futures prices haven't changed so the future price tree hasn't changed the only thing that changes here is when the option is valuable so for the put option remember for the put option the value of the put is equal to the maximum of the exercise k minus the futures price because it is a futures price after all zero close the bracket okay so for a futures price because the strike price here is equal to 60 if we take uh, 60 minus f of 80 99 or zero the value would be zero and again 60 minus 60 if the because it's a recombining tree that doesn't change k is equal to if you recall k is equal to 60 minus the futures price 60 that's got to be zero and then below uh, the futures price is 60 so futures uh, the exercise is 60 the futures price is 44 44 9, 1. when i take the difference between the two the terminal value the option is 15 55 so for the european option Okay, we get these figures for the terminal option prices for the put option, consistent with what we have here. I've updated the figures for the put option here. Okay, so we have the future prices are the same, backward recursion is applied. And what we observe is that if I'm working out the value at node B, I must use this FU and this FD okay and p doesn't change the estimation in terms of p remains the same as before the value node b is zero okay so the value node b is zero the value node c if for the european option 
is again same p same one minus p but now i've at e zero f u sorry f f u zero sorry f u zero f d fifteen fifty five zero nine and the value there would be equal to eight three sorry eight point one nine two so I better change my figures here. Okay, so in reality, this is eight, eight point one nine two zero. Okay, eight point, and I'll save eight point one nine two zero consistent with what we have here, and then for the to do the final backward recursion. Again, using the same form as before, using this formula for the backward recursion. Okay, I take the value, the time value of zero. So that's F U. This is F D. Um, F D uh, is so F U is zero. F D is eight one nine two zero. Applying. Uh, p and 1 minus p, I get 431, 431, and that's before. And the reason why I'm getting the same value, again, it's unusual, it's not probably what we might expect, but the value of the put and the value of the call here, if you go back to the call, that value there for the European call is the same as for the European put. And the reason why we're getting the same value is because the futures price and the exercise are the same. The futures price of 60 and the exercise of 60 are the same and that means the put and the call will be equal to each other from put call parity. Okay. Okay. And put, pull, put call parity for in the futures uh, for fut options based on futures uh, C the call plus the exercise discounted risk free rate for the full time period is equal to the put plus F Futures price discounted E negative RT. Okay, so the, the put and the call here, when K is equal to F, right, the put, the call and the put must be equal to each other for put call parity to be observed. So if K is equal to F, then C must be equal to P. Okay, and that's a condition that we find here that uh, the uh, European call was 431. The European put is also 431. And this is not for the call case. This instance here is definitely for the put. Okay, and below for the American put case. Now, in the American put case, right, just to be clear, same as in the previous example. We follow in line with what we did in the in the case of the European put, okay? Except when we have an American call, we say the maximum of the intrinsic or the time value, and if the value of the underlying is fifty one sixty four twenty five, okay, the intrinsic value we take sixty away, right? So the if you like 5164 subtracted away from the strike price of 60 subtracting taking the if the exercise is 60 we subtract away the 5164 we get a value of 83575 that's superior to this so instead of in our estimation using this value we actually plug in this value here. So to go from B and C back to A, right? Instead of using 8192, 8192, like what we did here, right? Instead, we use this value 83575, 83575, and that gives us a value of 440 for the American pot higher than the 431, that value for the American put is the same as for the European put, sorry, same as for the 
American call. Same as for the American call that we had 